Next up, item number seven, 1005 by Representative Grills. We got a motion and a second, and Chairman Grills. Chairman Todd is going to present this bill. And Chairman Todd, you are recognized, and I do show an amendment. Yes, sir, drafting code 4255. That's what I got. We got a motion and a second on the amendment. Would you like to add it to the bill? Does it make the bill? Yes, sir, it does make the bill. Okay, we're voting to place 004255 onto House Bill 1005. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. Amendment added. You're recognized, Chairman Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, just a point of clarification for folks that may be watching at home. The bill that I ran last week that did not get voted on rent and carried over to this calendar is very, very similar to this. This particular piece of legislation, as, it, as they ended up in the same position in committee, is actually a better vehicle to do what we wanted to accomplish because it opens up more titles and chapters, and I'll explain that in just a second. What this bill does, uh, it, it helps to do a, a few, th few different things, four different things specifically. One, to comply with the civil right indicated within the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, this bill removes the infringement of that civil right within our code by flipping the language currently found in our statutes. It removes the word offense in 1307A1 by deleting that section. The actual, it removes that actual offense, but does not remove any current crimes, nor does it create any new crimes related to carrying a firearm, except for 18 to 20 year olds. The second thing it does is exactly that. As we have been recently instructed numerous times by several courts, our restrictions on the civil rights of 18 to 20 year olds to keep and bear arms is unconstitutional. This bill corrects that throughout the code. The third piece, since the Constitution and numerous recent court decisions have reiterated our civil right to keep and bear arms and not simply pistols, this bill changes the word handgun to firearm throughout the code where that applies. And the last thing this bill does is to state the obvious in, in a way concerning immunity from civil liability related to posting a property with the placard, no firearms allowed. Under current state laws, a person or entity may post their property to prevent the presence of arms. This does not change that. Anybody with private property can still post their property, but the law states today that if you do not post and you have the ability to post, you have immunity from any civil liability related to anything related to that posting. The obvious that it does not state is that that immunity goes away if you do post, and so we're just clarifying that in code to say that for sure and to, to pretty much state the obvious. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you, Chairman Todd. Any questions for Chairman Todd? All right, we've got three people that would like to uh, testify on this. If Elizabeth Stroker, Colonel Perry, and Ben Voitis would come down, we'll go out of session. And if you'll just make sure your little red microphone lights on and introduce yourself to the committee and the members and have at it. It's uh, three minutes, by the way. Elizabeth Stroker, Legislative Director for the Department of Safety and wanted to come here. I'm going to kind of go through our legal issues as well as our departmental issues with this piece of legislation. And Colonel Perry will be here for any law enforcement or safety specific questions as well. Um, first up, this bill does completely delete the current constitutional carry law, which means that it is true constitutional carry for lack of a better phrase, but it would also delete the restrictions that this body put into place dealing with DUI offenders, stalking offenders, um, anyone who is considered mentally defective by a court, as well as any federal prohibitions, which are all being deleted since all of the constitutional carry is being deleted. So that's one of the concerns we have is those people would then still be allowed to carry as that is being deleted from the code. Second up is the general change from firearms to handguns throughout the entire code. First, uh, our current permits say handguns as you all know, whether it be concealed or enhanced. So does that mean we then have to go back and reissue or change, we're gonna have to change the wording on all of those permits? You're gonna have permits out there that say enhanced, concealed, and now firearms. That's probably gonna cause some confusion throughout the state as well as in other states. So just a thing that we wanted to bring up. Um, additionally, it is deleting the code where the defense to carry in your vehicle 
is a defense to carrying with the intent to go arm. But in doing that, it takes away an employer's ability from preventing an employee from carrying in an employer's vehicle. There are a lot of state employees as well as private employees who would probably like to keep that right specifically whenever it is their vehicle that they are leasing or letting their employee borrow. Um, lastly, I'll touch on the fact that just simply changing everything in the code from handgun to firearm is a safety concern from the Department of Safety, which is the main reason why we are opposed to the bill is we prefer that it stay handgun. Um, and changing it down to 18, as Chairman Todd said, is actually something we would be comfortable with. As one of the previous bills we've seen was drafted, that is something we are currently working on through pending litigation. Uh, so if it were just that piece, changing it down to 18 for the enhanced, the concealed, and the constitutional carry, that's something the department would be okay with. Um, but all of these other changes are what's bringing in all of our concerns. Thank you. Colonel, do you have anything? Thanks, Chairman. Colonel Matt Perry, I'll just add a few, uh, the, the safety concerns for law enforcement. So the, the idea of someone being able to carry uh, any kind of rifle or high capacity, uh, you know, rifles um, is a concern for law enforcement. Just our interactions with people, how do we address them? They walk in this building, we're, we're charged with protecting it. Um, we can't prevent them from coming in. And, and how does law enforcement interact with people that are just openly carrying weapons. Um, they it, can't ask if they can carry. Yeah, and, and because of constitutional carry, we, we can't ask them who they are, what they're doing, why they have it. Uh, we just have to let it happen, and it makes us extremely reactionary. And in most cases, we are, if they are an ill intended, because we're, we're not talking about the honest, hardworking, good people of, <laughs> of Tennessee carrying weapons. We're talking about the bad persons, the criminal element that have it. We will only be able to react to, um, you know, in most cases, we won't have firepower that matches their own. I'll stop talking. Thank you. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, got a few questions. Uh, what, what are the um, federal prohibitions that you mentioned that, that this bill will run counter to? Ms. Stroker. So, uh, Currently, under 1307G, that's the constitutional carry law, it, it says you can carry if you are 21 or 18 in certain situations unless, and there's about four or five things that you cannot constitutionally carry with, and one of those subdivisions is you are not prohibited under federal law. I, it, that could be covered elsewhere as far as purchasing, but with that being specifically removed as well as those others with stalking, DUI, adjudicated mental defective, all since all of those exceptions to being allowed to constitutionally carry or being removed, then you would assume that they would then be allowed to carry in those situations now. Representative Parkinson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I believe, just one second, I believe uh, Ms. Sonia may have a clarification. She, if, if she may interject, then I'll come right back to you. Elizabeth and Sonia Legal Services. So Section uh, 3917-1307-H is not deleted by the amendment, and that is the subsection that contains the prohibition on carrying if you have been convicted of stalking um, a certain number of DUIs adjudicated as a mental defective or otherwise prohibited under federal law. So that's still in the, in the code. Okay. Very good. Uh, Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the um, with changing of the uh, and I got a few questions, Mr. Chair, if you're okay with it. Uh, with changing of the uh, permits, is there a fiscal note that came with that with this bill? Mr. Stroker, you recognize? Uh, yeah, I believe there is a fiscal note on it. I don't have it pulled up. I could definitely pull it up, but I'm not sure if they took that into account of it. Um, but it was just something that we came up with. And thank you, Elizabeth, for correcting me. I am very easily wrong, so I appreciate that, and I admit when I'm wrong, so thank you there. But I, I can pull up the fiscal note, or if someone on the committee has it, sure. be happy to. Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and um, with, with the age change, I, if, I'm, if, I, if I, my memory serves me correct, which my memory doesn't serve me correct very often, you, you guys were opposed to going to 18 years old, if I'm not mistaken, last year, year before that. Why, what happened to change your mind this year? Ms. Strucker. Uh, there was a pending lawsuit that's been 
before the courts for the past couple years dealing with the subject matter, and the decision was made a few months ago that we would not be contesting that lawsuit, and we are under a pending current agreed order to lower that down or stop enforcing that age restriction. So due to the litigation and the pending order that's coming, that's why we are now moving to being comfortable with that based on what Chairman Todd stated earlier. President Parkinson, any follow-up? Yes, just last question. Okay. Under, under this legislation, can, if, if, if it becomes law, will a person be able to walk into the governor's office with an AK-47? Ms. Stroker? I'll let Colonel correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, uh, you already cannot carry into the Capitol itself, so posting would still apply, so you would not be able to carry in places that are posted. No firearms. So, no. Resident Parkinson. Thank, and thank you. And just to follow up on that, and, and so if it's posted, how does that affect liability in, in, regarding with this legislation? Okay. I, that may be a better question for the sponsor. It, it, we don't necessarily okay. deal with liability as okay. much. I'll I, I hold that till, till we get back on the list. Right, thank you, good. sir. Thank sounds you. good. Who else have on the list? Anybody else on the list for Colonel Perry or Ms. Stroker? Representative Grills, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Colonel, you said something about, you used the term, the average person, uh, the, like the average person, that's not someone you feared. So what's the difference between the average person and someone who is not average? Colonel. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Colonel Matt Perry, uh, I, I don't know the answer. The, the person who, who has bad intentions, the person who is um, a, a criminal, we, 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 we don't know. We have no ability to... Um, if someone is a convicted felon, uh, that they could walk in the building carrying a rifle, and we, we can't, if we don't know they're a convicted felon, we don't walk around knowing most convicted felons. So that, that, that's really what I'm talking about. Most people are not going to, um, do not have intentions or will not go and harm people, but it, it, it's those worst case scenarios that we're worried about. This is at Chairman Grills. I apologize. Uh, doesn't matter. Thank you, Chairman. Um, would you agree, though, that it's, would be beneficial for an individual to be able to defend themselves in case someone who was not the average person were to show up in a place of uh, just a common ground. So uh, their, them and their family aren't put at the mercy of a could-be perpetrator. Colonel Perry? Yes, sir. I, I believe someone should be able to, you know, like, uh, but, but not necessarily with rifles and higher capacity weapons, you know, smaller handguns as, as they are now. Chairman Grills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, a couple of years ago, the, uh, we had the uh, constitutional carry, which I think fantastic. I was a great fan of it. Uh, there were different weapons that were described in there that were called pistols. And the functionality of those weapons are the same as some of these long guns. Nothing changes. N uh, the magazine doesn't change. The functionality of it doesn't change. But yet, there are apparently you guys don't feel that the average person should be able to um, handle those weapons without. I don't know what what it is y'all would like, but why? Why? What's changed there? Stroker. I I don't fully understand okay. the question. Okay. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. An AR-15 is is a gun that seems to get the bad rap. They're this long. They can be they can be shot in different capacities. You can also get an AR-15 pistol, which can be carried right now constitutionally without a permit. They're the same gun functionality. What's the difference then? Why why would you say that it's okay to carry this one without a permit, but we don't want the uh, the rest of the Tennesseans to be able to carry the long gun? Ms. Stroker. You. Yeah, I, I don't think someone should be able to carry either one. That's. Okay. Representative Girls. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But we have established over and over again through Supreme Court cases that the individual has a right to keep and bear arms for their, for their protection. And it's our job as legislators, in my opinion, to make sure that every Tennessean's constitutional rights are protected. And I took an oath to make sure that I did that. And I feel like voting for and pushing this legislation is something that I have to do from a constitutional perspective because I owe 69,806 people back home that I plan on and intend to defend their right to keep and bear arms. Thank you. So do you recognize? I, I would say that yes, while it is a constitutional right, there is also plenty of case law as well as the recent Supreme Court decision that says it still can be regulated. Representative Grills. 
Any follow up? All right. Any other questions for Chairman Todd and uh, Representative Beck? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and for safety. So, according to uh, uh, Representative Beck, is this for safety or do I need to go in? Safety. Okay. Carry on. Uh, in in reading the bill, this would allow any um, individual to carry an AK-47 out front of this building, up and down Broadway. Is that? Am I reading that correctly? Safety, you recognize? Yes, sir. Representative Beck. And since there's no uh, permitting, that y'all would have to, if you had an officer who wanted to question one of these people carrying a uh, automatic rifle, you would have to go up to those. Your officers would have to approach those people, um, and you'd have to have probable cause to approach those people. Is that correct? Safety recognized. I think we'd at least have to have reasonable suspicion, but I don't believe carrying the weapon alone would be reasonable sus suspicion under this law and constitutional carry. Representative Beck? Typically, if one of your officers walks up to the guy outside uh, this this building carrying the AR AK-15, AR-15. Safety recognized. Your, your officer has a would be carrying a, a arm a, a gun that is is he would be your officer would more than likely be outgunned correctly safety recognized yes sir any follow-up representative back thank you <laughs> all right uh, chairman todd do you have anything for safety or you're recognized thank you mr chairman um i guess the first question i would have for you you're here today, both of you here, to testify on behalf of whom today? Safety. Who do you represent? Safety recognized. The governor's office in the Department of Safety. Okay, so you're not Chairman here on your personal capacity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So can you show me in statute or the Constitution of the t state of Tennessee where you as an administrative representative have the statutory or constitutional authority to come into this committee room in the legislature and oppose, which are your words, a bill that before this legislature. Safety recognized. We have the permission from the governor's office to come in and speak for the governor and his ad administrative agencies. Chairman Todd. That wasn't the question. Statutory or constitutional authority. You're a lawyer. I am a lawyer, but I do know do not know every single law that is on the books in Tennessee. Chairman Todd. And I would assert that you have no constitutional or statutory authority to come into this legislature as an administration representative to oppose bills. Safety recognized. I would direct that question to the governor's office and their legal counsel. Chairman Todd. They're sitting in front of me. You just said you represent the governor, so I assume you can speak for him. Safety. I, I, there's nothing I can say in this situation. I would have to agree. You mentioned, if, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Todd, you recognize. You mentioned the difficulties that this is going to present with the different permits that you have. We already have difficulties with permits. People have enhanced carry permits that don't say enhanced. Is that correct? Safety recognized? Uh, yes, that is correct, and that was a problem that we brought up back then when the bill was passed as well. Chairman Todd. So we already have difficulties with the public understanding what they have in their pocket, what's available to them, where they can carry, what's illegal, what's legal, very complicated code, and this helps to clarify that it's no longer an offense. You have a civil right to keep and bear arms, and it's not just pistols, Colonel. It's arms. As you well know, you took the same oath I did. So we all know what we're talking about here. And it may make people uncomfortable that somebody might see something that is different than what you're wearing, but it's still an arm. And our constitutional rights, our civil rights are that we have the ability and the right to keep and bear arms. And that's what this bill is about. And it's just, it's really appalling to me to have you guys come in here and represent the governor of this great state in the legislature, opposing legislation, it, it really is beyond the pale. 
Well, I think it's important to note that they're just doing what they're told to do and trying to keep us safe and safety recognized. Nothing I can add there. Like you said, we are doing our jobs and here saying our piece and how it would impact our department in the state. So. Any other questions for safety? And uh, Leader Lambeth, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and Chairman, with all due respect, I was monitoring from the back room. Thank you all for your testimony today. Thank you for keeping us safe in this state. And I have said this in committee before publicly, and I will say it again. These folks are here doing their job. They're doing what they have been asked to come here to do. And they are giving testimony for us to consider in whatever way we choose. And then it's our vote. But if we have a specific issue with the message, we are welcome to take that up with the commissioner who has 40 plus years of law enforcement experience that these folks are here to represent or with the governor of the great state of Tennessee. We can absolutely have those questions. I left the governor's office just earlier today and I can assure you these individuals do speak for, for him to a certain point. They can't tell us every single thing that he is thinking at any moment, but they have a process. And I just wanted to thank you publicly, both of y'all, for the job you do. We, guess, we agree, we disagree sometimes, but I respect the job that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. And uh, Representative Capley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make a comment to the committee, if that's okay. I wasn't going to direct. Do I need to wait for that? Or no, You're fine. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure the committee knows, and I'm sure several members up here already know, you can't exactly just go in anywhere and purchase an automatic firearm. There, there are several steps that you have to go through to purchase a weapon that, that would be classified under the automatic category. It's not like you can just go to Walmart and, and purchase a firearm all willy-nilly as far as when regarding the automatic category. You, uh, I think there's a little bit of terminology that's being used in this committee as far as automatic versus semi-automatic, AK-47, AR-50, whatever you want to say. It, it's, not, it's not as easy as what it's being perceived to be. Thank you. And Chairman Todd, is it for the department or on the bill? Well, it's it's related to the conversation and, and Leader Lambert's comments, and I certainly respect his comments and understand that. But I did this just that. I have discussed this with the governor's office and was assured just yesterday that this department would not come in here and oppose or support a bill. They would strictly say how it affects their department, and that's not what has taken place here. So I have done that, sir, and I appreciate that comment. And uh, Representative Parkinson, is yours for the safety or is it for uh, the committee? Yes, sir. It was actually for my my my, my junior colleague, uh, Representative Capley. Uh, so you know, could we go back into session since we're addressing the members? Sure. Anybody else for safety? All right, we're back in session. Hey, thank you all for safety for being here. We appreciate you. Keep up the good work. Chairman Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, and and to my to my colleague. Uh, you know, uh, I respectfully disagree with you in regards to, you know, the where you can purchase automatic and how you can purchase automatic weapons, because automatic weapons are pandemic in my community, and so there obviously are no rules to purchasing automatic weapons, you know, in in my community, and 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 I would welcome you to come and you know hang out with me on a New Year's or a Fourth of July so you can hear the firepower that exists in, in 38128. And I'm talking about, I'm a Marine, so I, I know what a 50 cal sounds like. I know what it feels like when it hits you in the chest, the sound of it. And those, those weapons exist in my community quite a bit. So I just want to share that with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Representative Capley, you're recognized. Thank you for the response. I would probably venture to say that those weapons were purchased illegally, not not legally. That was kind of with, from the standpoint that I was saying, you cannot, it's not as easy to just breeze into a store and say, I would like that automatic weapon there. Uh, I'm gonna pay cash and we're gonna roll out of here in five minutes. There's several steps that you have to go through to legally process paperwork and get a stamp, go through an FFL, I think it's an FFL legally purchased firearms and illegally obtained firearms are two different categories. Uh, the, it, it's much more difficult than what it's perceived to be. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and thank you for the, uh, you know, because uh, I think that's part of the, the challenge, you know, in, in, in this bill is that law enforcement will not know who has legally purchased a weapon, who has illegally purchased a weapon, if it's an automatic or if it's semi-automatic, if it has been modified, if it has not been modified, but they will be faced with 
uh, dealing with, you know, whatever, you know, is common. And not to mention uh, the 18 year olds or, you know, who have not been trained. And, and I know this has been been an argument. You, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't given my first legal weapon. And, and when I was in the Marine Corps until I was trained to be to know what to do with that weapon, when I can use it, when to use it and how to use it. So, but thank you for that, and thank and thank you, Ms. Sponson, for the conversation. Appreciate it. Representative Kaplan, any follow up? Any questions for Chairman Todd? Questions, questions have been called. We're voting on House Bill one zero zero five to send to civil for all those in favor. Signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Aye. The ayes prevail. Civil for.